Hi guys, welcome to Pro Air University. I'm here today to do a prosthetic class with you guys, uh, talking about uh, how to lay a foam latex piece down. This is a foam latex piece that's unprepared. I will show you how to prepare it. I will also show you how to apply it, and I will show you how to paint it using airbrush paint. Uh, real quick, I want to give you a quick little tour of our workshop area. This is where myself and Tabitha have been doing some of our work and trying to be creative, more, more so her being creative more than me. Um, but if you are going to binge watch on Netflix like I do, uh, you can also binge watch on Pro Air University. You want to go to proair.com, go to the more section. The first tab, you'll see a list of all the instructors that will be teaching. So you can check out their classes. It's uh, totally free. Feel free to check it out. And uh, some announcements real quick. Tomorrow will be Alex Hansen doing his class. On Saturday, Dutch by Harry will be doing a redo of his class because uh, we had a few things that were technically wrong on there. So he wanted to redo it to make sure that you get the best kind of quality of sound and performance. And on uh, next week, we have uh, some special guests coming in. It's a theme-based week, and we're going to have on May 4th, it will be May the 4th. Uh, wonder who that will be teaching that class. And uh, Cinco de Mayo, uh, we'll have some special guests over there teaching a class on something themed towards Cinco de Mayo. wonder who that will be, too. And it's your birthday. And Cinco de Mayo is my birthday, so feel free to hop on my page and spam me with all the happy birthdays you possibly can. Um, but... Uh, another announcement as well, Tabitha and I, we are pregnant. Uh, our gender reveal will be on the 2nd of May at, uh, what time are we doing that at? 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So be sure to check on my page, J. Baptista, for the live gender reveal. All right. So as we get started, I want to give you a quick tour of our workspace. Uh, since we're doing prosthetics, I do have my special effects kit over here. And what it has is it has all the products I possibly could ever have for special effects. It's got glues, paints, uh, alcohol-based based, alcohol -based paints, uh, specifically designed for makeup. Um, over here is our section that we have to do our practice heads, mold making, sculpting. Is on the other side. Over here, you will see my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> We have Clarice looking at you. <laughs> and on top of that, we have a sculpting station back over here to do some sculpting. So if you are bored at home and you've watched all the videos and you want to try something different, create a little workspace in your area to where you can do these different things and allow yourself to have the ability to do them. So over here are some paintings that Tabitha did. It took her a while to do them, but... We got them done. She got them done. We got the uh, Phantom of the Opera over here. She started this one. Then over here, she did Frankenstein a couple years later. It was around the same time, right? Um, uh, Boris Karloff and Lon Chaney were done in the same year. Okay. Uh, then we have the creature in the Black Lagoon. I call him Aquaman. I know. Just something that happens. And then we, her most recent one is the Wolfman. So a lot of fun things that, that we do over here. Um, and then, of course, the molding over here. So, over here is we're going to be doing this on. Uh, so you can scoot that in right here. We'll be doing work today on the perfect practice head right here. And you can get it over here at Perfect Practice Tools. Uh, this head is great for a number of different things. Uh, it's great for obviously face painting, so you can face paint it. Comes completely clean within two minutes. Um, you could also airbrush it, which is great because you can airbrush it and it wipes completely clean, ready to be painted again. And then you can do prosthetics on it, which no head has that. Uh, and then you can clean it again and then use it for uh, another series. Now, I really believe that. Airbrushing is going to be uh, a lot bigger from here on out, just because it's no one's touching anything. You 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 don't have to you know uh, use sponges or brushes to get in the eyes. 
Um, and it's very, very sanitary because you're not touching. There's no contact. It's contactless paint. Okay. So with, with prosthetics, of course, you know, makeup artists, what we like to do is we like to prep everything. So we use a, a hand sanitizer, clean our hands. Uh, we do that in front of the client so they know 100% that everything is clean. We have our brushes here, which we can use brush cleaner, and we use isopropyl isopropyl alcohol, 99%. Um, what this does is it this is a medical grade isopropyl alcohol. Okay, you can get this at any cosmetic store. Uh, you might have to special order it at Walgreens or CVS, but you just can't get it over the counter. This kills everything within 30 seconds. Even the White House announced that this kills the coronavirus in 30 seconds. So get it. It's what we use as makeup artists to use in our makeup to keep the makeup sanitary. We use an airbrush to clean out the airbrush gun. And it just makes everything nice and smooth. So make sure you get yourself some of that isopropyl alcohol. So uh, once your hands are clean with the hand sanitizer, and then once you are ready to paint, we're ready to start applying, we have a thing called uh, Skin Prep, which this is Skin Prep right here. Skin Prep I use, uh, you can get it on Amazon.com. And what it does is it's a protective wipe for the skin. It allows uh, adhesion of the actual glue to the face to, to create more of a stronger bond, okay? So you want to use that. Um, we have Prozade right here. And Prozade is a glue typically used in body painting to put on gems. Um, you can use uh, spirit gum as well, but Prozade is a stronger bond. For even something stronger for foam latex is Telesis. And Telesis is great for silicone prosthetics, which is uh, Tabitha and I's preferred way of doing prosthetics is encapsulated silicone because it's very very easy to blend and apply and paint it has a very realistic look to it uh, you could check out some of our work that we recently did right before um, we started quarantining which is a music video for Maluma right mm -hmm. Maluma uh, I have never heard of his music but apparently he's really big in the Spanish culture so we did a music video for him and we did an old age with a team of artists with uh, Danny Cordoba and uh, Stephen Puerta. So make sure to check that out. You can find that on Tabitha's page. She shared the link. So you're going to need your prosade. You're going to need um, isopropyl alcohol, which I have in this little bottle right here. You're going to need a few more things. You're going to need... You're going to need some brushes. You're going to need uh, a palette knife. You're going to need a chip brush. You're going to need a glue brush. And you're going to need a powder brush. Those are very important. So chip brush, palette knife, glue brush, powder brush. Airbrush gun on the side here. Hand sanitizer. I have my paints there, which we're going to be using uh, black, brown, white, and a flesh tone. Some alcohol-based paints right there, your prosthetic, and then your your model or and or client. Okay. Let me just adjust the camera real quick for you. Veronica Maluma Baby. Yeah. He's pretty big, apparently. I, I didn't know who he was, but they told me um do a good job. We did. <laughs> All right. So first things first, uh, you want to use a skin prep on the face. Since this is not skin, uh, what I want to use is I want to use alcohol to clean the head. So you always prep the, the uh, subject first, whether it's skin prep or if you're practicing it on a head, you want to use the alcohol. And all you're doing is allowing the most amount of bond with the glue to the surface by making sure that any oils, any residues are completely off the face and clean. All right, we have that right there. So when you first get a, a foam latex appliance, 
it's going to look like this right here, unpainted. And what you want to do is you want to prep it to where it is completely usable to lay on right then and there. So if you'll notice the nose holes right here are a little small. So what you want to do is you want to come inside here and pluck out those extra pieces so the nose can breathe. All right. This is what they call flashing. The flashing, you want to have this nice thin edge here so when you lay the prosthetic down onto the face, there is as little of a lift as possible. You want to make sure you can blend that into the skin really nicely. So I want to go around the edges over here, look at the flashing, and make sure that if there any pieces need to be pulled out, I can pull them out. Now this piece was created by Josh Council, awesome artist, body painter, and makeup artist. And I highly recommend you learn prosthetics uh, and get good at them. Not just for body painting, just to add to your repertoire and add another source of income. For us down here in South Florida, we get anywhere from $750 to $1,000 per day for doing prosthetics. And it's typically one to two makeups, sit on set, make sure the makeup is good, take it off at the end of production, and then go about your merry. So it's a very, very easy day but very skilled application, okay? So that's the prep piece right there. Sometimes you might want to pre-paint. You're more than welcome to pre-paint your piece before you apply it. I want to show you how to apply it and then paint it while on the person. Okay, so here we go. We have our face right here. And what I want to do is check to make sure that the piece fits. I start here at the nose, make sure the nose lines up perfectly, make sure the lip lines up perfectly, the eyes, look at it and then I can start. Make sure that it's lined up so that way I know exactly where to lay it down. Now for starter purposes, if you're just doing this for the first time, you don't have a head, you're putting this on a person, what I recommend is putting the piece down like this, taking a sponge with some powder, either baby powder or setting powder, and stipple the edges right here, all the way around, the entire face through here and through here and even the eyes what happens is when you remove the piece you're going to see an outline of where the powder is all right and that will determine where the actual glue goes as you progress into your prosthetics application you'll be able to lay it down look at it and then just lay the glue down as need be all right so i always like to start right here in the center I lay this down first, and then I'll go from there. Once this is down, I have enough area to lay it down. Do you have the hair dryer in there? All right, so what I'm going to do is take a Dixie cup. I'm going to take my Praze. Josh has high school. Josh Council? Mm -hmm. Oh! What's up, mate? Josh is going to be looking at this, and if I make any mistake, it's going to be like, oh, it's rubbish. <laughs> Absolute rubbish. Well, he's just stopping by for a quick hello. So oh, he's in and out. I'm sure, I'm sure he'll, he'll comment on you after. Um, yes. All right. So, I have a hair dryer handy. It's always good to have one handy, so that way, uh, when you, you want the glue to dry fast, you can. Also, on this hair dryer is a cool setting. And you always, I like to tape this down specifically for prosthetics. So that way I know when this goes onto the skin, there is no way I can burn the person. Um, you always want to make sure you have one of these right here with the cool setting. I like to recommend to tape it down so that way, as I said before, you do not burn your subject. Okay, that goes to the side right there. So I'm going to start by laying the glue right here in this area laying it down so it gets a nice adhesion. All right, so taking my glue and I'm laying it down. Josh is asking how many times did you have to apply that piece in 2014? Ah, well, so 
those of you that don't know, Josh Council was my mentor on the job at Ocean Park for a Halloween event. So he made sure I knew how to lay a prosthetic down really well. And it took me a lot of trial by fire, man. So I, I actually like learning trial by fire. And here's the reason why. All right. So like when you learn something, you can have somebody hold your hand, which is great. But unless you actually realize your mistakes and you're not going to realize your mistakes by having someone hold your hand, you, you learn faster. You adapt. Natural human instinct, at least I find in my experience, that you get it really quickly. I study martial arts. Hey, you don't learn martial arts by someone holding your hand. If you get hit, then you will learn very quickly. You don't want to get hit, so you move out of the way. Same thing when it comes to applying your art. All right, so here we go. I'm going to take this, and as you can see, it's really liquidy, and you can see the white right here, all right? Can you guys see that white residue right there? Mm -hmm. All right, so you want that to go away, all right? So once that goes away... Then it's dry. All right, so once that starts to get clear, then it's starting to dry, you want to start here and lay it down so it gets a nice adhesion right there, okay? Just like that. Now, a little trick is to have baby powder handy in a cup. All right, so take your baby powder, put it in a cup, and the reason being is this glue is so sticky once it's dry that if you were to touch it and press it here without powder on your finger, you're going to end up lifting the prosthetic and doing more harm than good. So you always want to make sure when you're in here, take a little powder and press right here. Okay. Now that's on there. See, that ain't going anywhere. All right. So from here, what I like to do is lay the eyes down next. Okay. So I lay the eyes down, take a look, see where I'm at. I can pull it back and lay glue right here, stretch it if needs be and lay it down. All right, so you want to avoid laying the prosthetic over the eye part right here. And the reason being is if you do that, they will be literally unable to open their eye. So you want to stretch it out, lay it down, and you'll be able to do that once the glue is dry to lay it down, powder your finger, press, and then go about your Mary. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to pull the piece back. I'm going to go here. Now, I like to practice exactly the way I like to apply. And I have the eyebrow right here. So you want to avoid laying glue on the eyebrow. All right? You can do that. You can lay glue there if you prep the eyebrow first. But you don't want to just lay glue down there arbitrarily because you glue down someone's eyebrow with this glue. They're not going to be happy, I promise you. It's no fun. So would you, like if you had, how would you prep the eyebrow? So um, actually Josh taught me a good technique. So I did a Gamora paint for Pro Air, which ended up in Makeup Artist Magazine. Tabitha and I did that. Um, so what we did was we, Elmer's glued the eye, okay? Once it's glued, Elmer's glue is safe. It comes off with water. And the then, eyebrow. The eyebrow, yeah. So we did the eyebrow with Elmer's glue. Then once it was laid flat, I did powder on top of that. Then we took a green marble sealer, which is a product. It's a concentrate, not the, not the sealer spray, but the actual concentrate. It's used for old age stretch and stipple. And then we applied it on the eyebrow right here. It knocked out the eyebrow and covered it up as if there was no eyebrow that was even there. So that's a, a little thing you can do to 
take out the eyebrow. To prep the eyebrow. Prep the eyebrow. Most of the time, you do not need to prep the eyebrow at all because if there's enough space between the eyelid and the eyebrow bone, you can have enough space to glue down the prosthetic and avoid the eyebrow entirely. And then you wouldn't place any glue whatsoever. All right, so once that is dry, let's go ahead and lay this piece down. Donald uh, McCaskill is mm -hmm. asking, do you ever glue both contact sides, glue and let dry the prosthetic as well as the skin? I do. Um, I'll do that if I need, if I know that there's a need for a strong adhesion. So if I'm doing uh, for film, I'll do that. For a haunt, maybe, probably not. For a trade show, most definitely not because I don't need a strong adhesion there. I just need something to get on them, last for a couple hours, and then we're good. So what you're saying is, is that if you wanted to glue both sides, it varies on the situation. It varies on the job as well as the person's skin. Correct. So if you're using the skin prep right here, uh, what this does, it even says it right there on the, right there, right there. It says, uh, helps tape, film, and appliance adhesion. This is a foam latex appliance. That's the official term for it, it's an appliance. So the skin prep really helps with the adhesion. So I promise you, you do that on the, the, the person that you're doing the makeup on, and that thing will hold for a long, long time. So I did um, the commercial series for um, Five Below. For uh, those of you that don't know what Five Below is. For those of you that don't know what Five Below is, it's a store where you can go in and get any of their cool products for $5 or below. And I did the um, elf ears for those commercials. So I use a skin prep and man, those things will just last all day. So what we're going to do is take this with the dryer. Just like that. I'm going to come over here and make sure this is laid down. Really nice. And just so you know, you're, it's 122. Okay. So make sure you press inside here. So that way it lays down. Just like that. All right, so real quickly, I'm gonna do the other side just so I can knock this part down. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did on that side. The angle might be a little bit off, but it's the same exact application, just a different side. And I wanna do that really quickly so that way I don't spend too much time on it for you guys and move on to the next part. Well, while Jay's doing that, one thing that I will chime in on, this part, oh, hold on. One thing that I'd like to um, mention that's extremely important is symmetry. You want to make sure that at this point, he has to look in the center because your nose is, one, is the first fo focal point, but most people stare at the eyes. And if the prosthetic is not laid down evenly, then it's going to look off. And your prosthetic, your character can end up with a lazy eye, or when you highlight in shadow, it may look off. So this is the point when you're gluing both sides down that you make sure that your sides are even. So at this point, you would have to stand in the center, make sure the person's face is relaxed, their shoulders are even and balanced correctly, and then that way, when you glue everything down, it looks correct. Yes, if it's off, as, as Josh would say, it's all food. So just make sure that you get a nice lay down. So as you can see right here, what, the, what I'm doing is I'm taking the glue brush and I'm taking it and running it over the prosthetic piece onto the skin and smoothing it out. And there's a reason why I do that. Um, what I do, when, when the glue dries, it'll create this layer right here. And you could even use Prozade for stretch and stipple if you are skilled with Prozade. Um, 
it, it just creates this nice little layer, an extra barrier, and it's just an extra step I like to do. So from here on the side, what I'm going to do is continue laying this glue down like this. Now, as you get more skilled in your prosthetic application, you could, if you are skilled enough and you are fast enough, lay the whole piece down and just glue everything that you need to, put it on, adjust it, and then go about your merry. So once this is down, like that. And notice this little wrinkle right here. What I'm going to do is I'm taking this glue and just kind of working it out till that edge gets as flush with the skin as possible. Now the reason why we like to use um, encapsulated silicone is because the edges are nice and easy. You lay the prosthetic down. It's a little bit of a different application. Um, you need to be very precise with your gluing. When you lay it down, you take a little bit of acetone and you burn the edge off not burning the skin, but burning the actual latex off because acetone and, and latex melts. It, the acetone melts the latex. And it, it creates... Melts, acetone melts the silicone. So, no, the... Yeah, so well, the ball cap latex that goes over it, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it gives you that nice edge. or It's actually like a, like a vinyl, I'm sorry, not latex. Mm -hmm. um, and what it does is it creates a nice even blend that you cannot even see. Which is, which is ultimately what you want. So as you notice, this is coming up right here because I didn't dry it with the hair dryer, but I'm gonna hit this right here with my finger, making sure it's nice and secure. Hitting this with the glue right here on the side. And then really quickly, hitting it with the hair dryer. Cool. All right, so then I'm gonna take my powder and just press that in there like this, making sure that it doesn't move and making sure that when I press it, my finger's not sticking to it and pulling it up, okay? So what I'm gonna do from here is take a look at this area and I'm gonna start to glue down here with my brush, gluing this down, and on the lip as well. So what this allows me to do, it allows me to push down and allow the piece to glue entirely to the face. So I'm doing this with powder on my finger. Okay, gluing this down here, And then laying the prosthetic piece down like so. All right. I'm not going to worry about the glue down here. I'll do that at the very end. I just want to make sure I get the other side down as well. A little powder onto the piece. All right. So let's go to this side. Where so, would you recommend to get your telesis and other products? So, uh, there's a store in Orlando called ADO Studios. Uh, you can get that stuff over there. Good pricing, good people. That's where I would recommend. So go to AEO Studios, I believe, dot com. All right. So I'm laying this down still with the glue. Making sure I glue the entire thing and then come back in with the hair dryer to make sure it's nice and dry. The the thing with Prozade is it's a contact adhesive, right? So 
just like any contact adhesive, um, once it's dried and touches itself, it creates a chemical bond that locks it in place. So, when asked, do you put prosate on both sides? Yes, you can. If your client has a mustache, how would you prep the mustache before putting this on a prosthetic piece? So that's a very good question. Um, it's from Peggy Hernandez. Peggy Hernandez. Okay, so Tabitha actually just did a music video um, for, who was the artist? Uh, Paulino Rubios. Paulino Rubios. And the, And it was actually this prosthetic that we were using too. Yeah. And the, the, the guy who she was doing the makeup on had a full-on mustache and beard. It, he was under contract, so we couldn't ask him to trim it or shave it. So the end result was was a miracle. I didn't, I couldn't believe that she actually pulled it off. So that question, I'm gonna have her answer. <laughs> Why not? Because oh, you're answering that question because you, you you recently did it. So oh my God, Peggy. Okay, this is um this is a difficult question to answer. Um, just like. How I explained before, well, Jay and I explained before about the eyebrows. Um, it varies, you know, it depends on the situation. How thick and coarse is the actor's hair? Uh, if it, it's not tameable, you may have to have an alternative route where you may have to place down the um, Elmer's glue stick uh, technique and powder it, dry it. Uh, I mean, granted, it's not the most comfortable area because that's where you breathe and you stretch a lot versus the eyebrow area. So, you know, um, ahead of time, depending on the production, you know, you make sure that the production, your, your director, casting agent, everyone knows how important it is to, you know, make sure that your person who is wearing prosthetics does not have facial hair, but a lot of times that's not the case. So um, you are going to have issues that it won't last as long. You have to reapply. There is going to be frequent touch-ups added and your time is very limited on it. So sometimes the production needs to adjust their shots and make sure they get the most important ones done first and up close because it's going to be a lot of work. A lot of times you make sure you have a backup prosthetic too, just in case things need to be reapplied and done. I mean, it's a lot of trial and error and making sure that you are capable and confident enough to work on the fly. So um, it's a loaded question. You are more than welcome to message me after if you have additional questions about that. All right, so as she was talking, you may have noticed that I'm taking the prose and applying it all over the prosthetic. So typically what you want to do is you want to have this prosthetic be covered in what they call packs. Okay? Uh, when you're doing foam latex, it gives you a base coat um, and it allows adhesion for other products as, such as alcohol paints to go onto the face. Um, the packs is one part acrylic paint and one part prosade. So 50-50. Mixed together creates a skin safe, glue, a skin safe paint that bends with the face. Okay, so if you've ever used acrylic before on the skin, it actually cracks. So it does. It, there's no way to prep the skin for the acrylic; it just crumbles. So to make it pliable, you use one part acrylic, one part prose. Now the common myth is, oh, you can't use acrylics on the face because da, 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 da. it's it's totally fine, and it's what actually the pro makeup artists use in Hollywood. So if you know who Rick Baker is, he uses Pax, and the reason why it's called Pax is because it's prosade and acrylic. Okay, so once that is there, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the hair dryer again, real quick, just to make sure it's dry. Yes. How do you solve the problem of hot actors and pooling sweat under appliances? Um, so there's a product out there called No Sweat. 
Um, and that's something that you're going to learn if you're doing a, if you, if you can see them perspiring before you get, they get in the chair, um, or if they've told you before then you would, you would do that. So make sure you know who you're working with. Um, if you're working with someone for the first time, you'll ask them a certain series of questions. You know, are you allergic to latex? Are you, uh, are you a sweater? Things of that nature. How oily is your skin so that you know if you need to, you know, use a skin prep. I always do now. In any case, I always use skin prep regardless. But there's a product out there called No Sweat. You can get that at AO Studios as well. Uh, it's a great product to prevent sweating. Um, for that. Okay, so once that's laid down, you may notice there's certain areas here that aren't as smooth as others, right? So you could spend the time with your Q-tip and alcohol really feathering it out, which you know ultimately you want to get good at. But if you can't, I want to show you how to troubleshoot that right off the bat. So here we have Cabo Patch. Cabo Patch is basically Cabasil, which is a powder form, and Prozane. It's 50-50 mix, okay? So, well, actually, not 50-50, I'm sorry. Um, you want to get a consistency almost like peanut butter. All right? So that jiffy peanut butter that you get, that really creamy peanut butter, not the natural peanut butter, but that jiff peanut butter, that's what you ultimately want. You want to use it very sparingly. Now, when you get cab Cabasil and you mix it with the Prazé, make sure you, do it, you mix it together in a very well-ventilated area. I highly recommend doing it outside. I recommend using an N95 mask as well because... Cabosil is highly toxic for the for the lungs. You do not want to inhale that stuff. You will regret it instantly. But as soon as it's mixed with Prozade, it's safe. As soon as it's mixed with Prozade, it is completely safe because it's no longer an aerosol. So what I like to do is hit the areas that kind of need it, and you don't want too much. You don't want to you don't want to be too heavy with the Cabosil. Now, if you've ever spackled before, you may go, what, "What's a spackle?" You ever had a hole in the wall? Okay. So you ever had to take that uh, that white pasty stuff that you get at Home Depot and fix a hole in the wall? That's spackle. So it's the same kind of concept as that is where you are taking those little ridges and the holes. You're taking your cabosil and you're just going over it to create a nice flush edge. That flush edge will transfer very easily when you paint it to the skin going into itself. It's basically a second skin is what you ultimately want it to look like. You don't want it to look like it's just an appliance on there. You want it to look like as if it was that person's skin. Okay? So, I'm going to hit a couple of areas real quick. Um, 135. Oh. Just let me know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to extend uh, to Donald's comment about mm -hmm. test patches. Test patches are a great idea and usually test patches are practiced if there is most of the time on productions a makeup test like a re uh, dress rehearsal before the actual production day because on production day you obviously are not going to be able to have time to test anything. So that's why you always have a consult with your director and your actor to let them know how important it is to make sure that you have a day to test the makeup first. That way, you're not only testing for allergies, but you're testing to make sure that it's the right look for the production, everybody's happy, the lighting is tested, the framing is done, and your timing is on track. Yeah, you should always have a makeup test especially when you're doing prosthetics, because if you don't, then that client is going to have that look that day. I had a client, we had a prosthetic, which I didn't create the prosthetic, uh, but they, they ordered it from somebody else. They get the prosthetic. I applied it. It looked great. They didn't like the prosthetic. So, you know, there's nothing you can do at that point because the prosthetic is the prosthetic. It's not like I can sculpt something right there on the fly. Uh, and create a entirely different look. So, you know, make sure that the makeup test is done. Make sure that they know what the product they're ordering. And it, of course, you know, it's going to come with the budget. They got to pay for that. All right, so we have that down. Let me just go ahead and apply some glue to the other part right here. So that way it lays down nice and smooth. 
Now you'll get to the point where you can lay prosthetics down, especially if you've been doing them for a while, very, very quickly. Um, but when you're doing it for film, it's, it takes quite a bit of time. You want to make sure it's as picture perfect as possible. All right, so you may be wondering like, oh man, he's using a brush for glue. Yes. Yes, I am. So, what you always want to do is whenever you're using a glue brush, this will be your glue brush. You're not going to use it for anything else. You're not going to use it for, you know, painting. You're not going to use it for application of anything else other than glue. And the reason being is once that glue hardens, it's going to solidify and create this hard patch of bristles. So, you always want to have alcohol handy. Put a little alcohol in there mix it in there and now it's going to set with the alcohol in it so that way it doesn't solidify at the end of the application i will make sure that i use another set of alcohol clean it out entirely then use brush cleaner which we use from uh what was that what's our brush a cinema secrets for a brush cleaner and clean it out entirely so once this is dry we can paint it so make sure you close your cattle patch Make sure your project that you had before, if you have, you want to use it sparingly because this stuff is really expensive. All right. So I'm going to show you this gallon right here of project costs 250 bucks. So you want to make sure that that cap is on there at all times. Use what you need. Don't use any more than you need because otherwise you're using the rest of your money. You don't want to use that. Um, when you go on production, obviously you have your day rate, which will be whatever you deem it is. And then you'll have your kit fee. Kit fee will cover things like glue, alcohol based paints, skin pro. Because all of your tools you have are great, but the most important thing is going to be your consumables, which is your makeup. So keep that in mind. Your day rate's your day rate. Your kit fee covers everything else. All right. So what we're going to do here now is dry it. Alright, so once I have that there, I'm going to do last press. We call it last press because I'm going to press it down, make sure everything is where it needs to be. And this whole time, yes, your client does have their eyes closed. And the reason being is any kind of glue adhesive that's right here in the eye area, if they were to open their eye, since it already is dry, it would lock their eye open, okay? So you have to set it with the powder, whether you use it with translucent powder or whether you use a baby powder or some kind of uh, neutral powder. Or you have to set it first. So once you set the eyes, then they can open their eyes, not beforehand. All right. So if you want to do the eyes really quickly, set it, have them open it so that way they're comfortable, then you can continue applying the rest of the face, but make sure that you set the eyes before they open their eyes. Don't make that mistake. You do it once, trust me, you're not gonna do it again. How do you address an actor that doesn't want to wait for you to remove the prosthetic after the shoot and wants to do it later? From Michael. Uh, impossible. It is not recommended. Uh, I will let them know that this glue is a medical grade adhesive. It could easily tear your skin off and that is something that you as a makeup artist uh, will have to take off. If they want to take it off before, if they want to do it themselves, make sure you have a waiver. Um, you are held completely responsible. That, that they are completely responsible for taking it off because there is no way that I'm going to be responsible for someone taking it off beforehand or later. So if you're at a, at a trade show and you put somebody into a prosthetic, you make sure 100% you take them out of the prosthetic. It is completely unprofessional to do so otherwise. Uh, I do not recommend it. You can easily tear your skin. And if you tear your skin, you tear your skin. That's that's forever. That's no joke. That's like getting a tattoo. Your, your reputation is everything. No matter how much a person makes us think about it, it's your reputation because it's your work. They can easily lie and deny and say that they had nothing. They didn't say that at all. They were taught this and they can say whatever they want. 
So it doesn't matter. <laughs> mm -hmm. If they want to wear it later, then they have to hire you hourly to remove it later then. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're, we, we feel very strongly about that because obviously, you know, it's a very serious thing. It's, it's, it's a special makeup. It's not like, you know, a, a beauty makeup, which, you know, you could take off yourself with just a wipe. It has to be done uh, professionally. Well, some people. <laughs> or some people, yeah. <laughs> some people right, don't so, even know how to take off their makeup. <laughs> so what I'm going to use, I'm going to use uh, um, a duo, all right? And I'm going to grab an, uh, an orange, a red sponge. Can you give me a red sponge in there? Yeah. So I'm going to take this red sponge and just a little chunk right there. What is that red sponge? This red sponge is a stipple sponge. Um, and what we use it for um, is for using duo. You want to go duo? Isn't that eyelash glue? Yes, it is. It's awesome. So I take a little bit of the duo, put it on my palette over here. And what I'm going to do is load some up onto the sponge like this. And all I'm going to do is just gently add another layer of glue right there on the edge between the prosthetic and the skin. And what you'll notice is that texture. Okay, that texture is what you want because that texture will allow a nice transition from the prosthetic to the skin and allow a, even more of an advanced blend. It's 146. So... What I'm going to do is do that all over. Veronica Bassetto is asking, are you going to tell us how to take it off then? Yeah, yeah, I'll take it off. We might go over the time, but, you know, it's a live feed. Check it out later if you got to go. Um, and also make sure you go onto the website. Make sure you go to ProWear's website, ProWear.com, P-R-O-I-I, -I, I'm sorry, P-R-O-A-I-I-R.com. Make sure that homepage, you check out that more tab. That more tab will have all the instructors' uh, classes, so you can check it out at a later viewing time if you can't check it out right now. Um, it's good to binge watch. You know, like I said before, if you're watching Netflix and you want to do something creative, make sure you check that out. ProAir University is totally free um, for you guys to check out. Um, make sure to stay tuned after the feed as well because Donna will be going live. Um, to make a couple quick announcements. Beverly Wilcox Grant is asking, what do you use to remove the glue? So to remove the glue, you're going to use um, a product called SuperSolve. Uh, if you can't get a hold of SuperSolve, you'll use the active ingredient in SuperSolve called isopropyl myristate. It's a very oily based product. And what it does is it releases the hardened glue safely from the skin um, and it allows you to clean it efficiently for prep for everyday use so if they have to go back um, into regular makeup they can do that as well safely removes the glue and any adhesives from the skin right so if you're using a practice head like this right here you don't want to use the ice purple mirror state or super solve the reason being is when you put something on there um, that's that's not skin like if you use it on a latex or if you use uh, ice purple mirror state or super solve on any kind of latex or any kind of adhesive that's porous like this right here, you cannot apply it again. So you want to use alcohol for your heads, ice purple mirror state, or super solve for your um, actors. Can you have any ice purple mirror state in there? Did it say it on there? Yes. This is the active ingredient right here, isopropyl mirror state. This is what you use for removing prosthetics from the skin. Okay. So. That's dry. Well, it will be dry in just a second. We'll hit it with the hair dryer. Alright, so the reason why we did cross aid all over the face uh, on the prosthetic is because the airbrush paint won't stick to the prosthetic if you just paint airbrush paint onto the prosthetic. You have to use a um, base, which is either the packs or you have to use a uh, prose to lock it down. Alright, so what I'm going to do real quick is just take a little bit of this 
Pro Wave color and just kind of lay a base coat down. While Jay's painting, I'll help answer some of the questions on the feed here. Okay, so um, Elaine and Mariska, I'll answer both of your questions at once. So we change from the Praze to the Duo Glue for the edge. And the reason why we use the Duo instead of Praze Cream or any other kind of glue, strictly it's because Duo has a latex base in it. And when it dries, when you use the little sponge, it helps create that skin texture that resembles more pores. So that way it's an easier transformation and it helps hide that smooth edge that you get from the glue. Um, <laughs> Jenny's like, I think your model has fallen asleep. <laughs> yeah, the, the head nodding right there. Like, yeah, yeah, it oh. keeps on bobbing. <laughs> oh my God, stay awake. There's a technique that's not recommended. There's a little shot up there that in the nose. Wake him up. Don't recommend it. I do it to Jay all the time. He does it to me all the time. Um, okay, uh, Michael wants to know, what's your Instagram and where are other places that we can find your work, Famous Jay? Uh, so my Instagram is T-I-S-T-A, Tista, underscore J, J-A-Y, um, is my Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, those are the two main places where you can see some of my work. Um, you will also see me, uh, this summertime, August, with, uh, Michael J. Green painting at Sturgis that I just knocked the screen real quick. Let me just adjust it real quick. There You're we fine, go. Sweetheart. It looks good. Um, at Sturgis and Fantasy Fest. Uh, Michael and I do those as well, which is pretty awesome. Alright, so now that I have this here, right? So I have my base down. I'm going to do a technique which is called modeling. And basically I'm going to follow the forms that are here. Let me just get that brown going. There we go. So that brown right here, and you want to just Create noise. As you hear that air going, you might hear that little ch 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 is what you want. That creates a break in the line. So if you do a line like this, you're just creating a line. You want to create that break to where it's breaking up the texture of that line. Okay, and that we're gonna model. Let me try to get some more of that brown in here. Can you be specific on what colors you're using? So this base color right here um, is a made up color. Um, basically, uh, I took a little bit of flesh tone, added some brown, uh, muted it a little bit to create a kind of like a beige skin tone, but off color. Um, it was just done on the fly and I had it and it's good. I like to use uh, a lot of neutral colors like browns, earth tones. Uh, things of that nature. So this is dark brown from Pro Air, or the regular brown. Okay. How much do the heads go for? Heads are two fifty a pop, um, and the silicone lasts up to twenty years. So it means it's a product that doesn't go bad. If you've seen other practice heads, they range from ten dollars to fifty five dollars. You know they don't work. You can't clean them. You paint them once and they're done. And you, or if you try to, you try to scrub them off. I'll show you this head right here that's painted. This head's been painted for a couple months now, and I left it on here to show you guys how easy it is to come off. You can see a, a wider range of colors like red and yellow and blues and all that jazz. What can you do on the practice heads other than the prosthetics and face painting? So you could do airbrushing like we're doing right now. You could do beauty makeup. You could do prosthetics. You could do face painting. It's the only head on the market that could do that safely. Um, and without uh, flaw. So I'm going to add some modeling here and all I'm doing is just breaking up that skin texture just like that. Add some more brown. And I'm going to do that throughout the entire piece at a distance. And And the reason why I'm doing that at a distance right now is to create that first layer. So a lot of people, when they first get into prosthetics, 
they're going to paint the entirety of the prosthetic line for line for line for line for line. You don't want to do that. And the reason being is you, you want the prosthetic to be the prosthetic. You want it to look like it's part of their skin, not like you painted the skin, if that makes any sense. Because if you overly paint the prosthetic, well, why even have a prosthetic? Why not just do an illusion face paint or an airbrush illusion and do it that way as opposed to actually having a 3D surface to where it looks like an actual... Use the sculpture. Yeah, you want to use the sculpture. Don't take it away by... You're killing it. You're, you're not... You're creating... You're taking away the three-dimensional of the actual sculpture, which is the realism behind it. Yeah. All I'm doing is adding some modeling here just to kind of break it up. Who was your model for the face? I would tell you, but I cannot. It was wiser. <laughs> wiser was the model. You see his elegant features. That, that gorgeous face that we got from Wiser. Yeah. Uh, wiser and I created the heads. Um, it's, a, it's a very, it's, a, it's expensive to make, so that's why the high purchase price. But like I said, there's no other head out there that can do it. All right, so what I'm going to do now is take a little bit of black. And then just gently model as well the black in certain areas. Just like that. All right? You don't want to be too much. You don't want to be too heavy handed with it. Just enough to kind of break it up. I'll hit a little bit of black right here in the middle. Like that. And a bit of the eye. And what I like to do is take that color and start here at the top and kind of work it around this way. Going against going against the line. So you never want to do a line right here separating the prosthetic and the skin because you're drawing attention to it. So how do you break that line? You want to go cut it uh, you want to cut it in the opposite direction. All right, so you want to go from here down. So you're bringing the, the makeup from here, down, here, down. So using the airbrush just to enhance the prosthetic, right? Then you're going to come back in and you're going to stipple with a chip brush. Or spatter, I'm sorry, not stipple. Jenny is asking, do you find that building layers of color adds to the colors in translucent skin? Um, well, in any skin. So once you have your base of colors down here, so the airbrush paints are very, very opaque. Okay. So once you, unless you're using the Pro Air ink on the face, which you can do, and it's more of a translucent effect. Um, but what I like to do is once I have my base down, then I'm going to come in with... Once you apply it, it goes on very opaque. Once it dries, it's very, very translucent. So that way you can build colors up. So if you check out on Tabitha's page, she posted the Maluma video, music video. All those paint jobs were done with spattering techniques. They weren't done with airbrush. Everything was done in layers of spatter. And what it does is you, 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 you have to spatter it very, very precisely. You don't want to just spatter crazily, if you spatter crazily, it's all the same color. So when you look at that video, you'll notice there's different um, skin textures. Going off of Jay's comment about layers, um, well, we used for Maluma's uh, music video silicone, encapsulated silicone prosthetics. And silicone is significantly different versus foam latex because silicone is more tra translucent. So you get more of a depth versus foam latex, which is uh, completely opaque. So when you're working with a foam latex prosthetic, you have to add a lot more layering and color and depth in order to create the illusion that the skin does have layers and it is breathable instead of solid like this. When it came to Maluma's music video, because we had the benefit of having silicone, we didn't have to go 
through that much detail. So the splattering and the sponging technique um, for the silicone prosthetics was in a sense significantly easier, but when you splatter and you add colors, you have to take into account where would certain colors be more concentrated. So would you find more blood capillaries located by the eye area versus the cheek? What's the age of the person? So you have to think about all those things in order to bring realism, not only character, to the prosthetic. So as you notice, uh, when, I, when I do the spattering right here, what it does is it effectively knocks back the airbrush makeup that I've already put down. It creates that undertone of those that black spots around the eyes with that base, and then it gives a skin-like texture of that spattering effect onto the prosthetic. And what I'm going to do is multiple layers of spatter to create an almost uh, skin-like breakup. Because when you look at skin, it's not just one color. So I was teaching, both Tabitha and I were teaching at a makeup school um, this past year. And, you know, what we taught the kids was, you know, you're not just creating a one-tone skin texture. Your skin has, you look at your skin in the mirror, it has many different colors, many different breakups. It's a, so it's very texturized, it's highly pigmented, but at the same time, it's multiple colors. You know, some people might have a lot of reds in their skull, their, their, their skin. Some people might have more green in their skin. You know, so once I get that down, I'm going to come back in with this uh, mixture of almost like a this color right here and this color. So it's like a mixture of the two colors that I'm going to do. I've seen some people do prosthetics where it's just, you know, they, they, they go so in depth with the airbrush and it looks cool, but is it good for, for film? No, because it, it just looks overly painted. When you overly paint a prosthetic, it looks very cartoonish. It might be good for like one picture, but once you start seeing it moving, it, it doesn't look that real because there's no way that the nasal labial folds are one line. You know what I mean? It's, it's going to be broken up into different skin textures. So I'm adding some of this dark brown in here, just like this, really breaking it up. The more break up, the better. So I keep on breaking it up, keep on breaking it up. While um, Jay continues to add depth and texture to this prosthetic that's turning out pretty cool, um, I'm going to answer a question for Donna. Mm -hmm. So I have been a model for Pro Air before for the uh, Zombie Kit 2. And being both an artist and a model, um, knowing both sides, the kind of advice and tips I can give for an artist as far as being a model and as far as a model to help out your artist is... You know, just making sure that you're calm, share as much information without overdoing it as possible, you know, about like you have allergies, like for example, my eyes water easily. So I have to kind of prep myself because I know that once I get my eyes painted, I'm going to twitch. Um, I'll make sure I'll have like Q-tips or a cotton pad near the area so that way I don't ruin the person's makeup. You know, don't. Um, you have to understand that the person's working and they're usually on a time limit. So having something like your cell phone by you or having to stop to go pee every two seconds, you know, not eating beforehand and, you know, like you have to be very considerate because just because you're a model and you're sitting there, you're working. That's your job right now. So your job is just as important as the artist. So you're asking, you might ask yourself like, well, where do I get these alcohol-based paints at? Uh, Pro Air actually sells these these uh, alcohol-based paints as well. Um, they are activated with 99% isopropyl alcohol. That's the that's the uh, the product that you want to use. That's what's up there. Is that 
isopropyl alcohol, you want to use that right there um, to activate the paints. Um, that's the number one thing that's going to activate it. I believe that her product, correct me if I'm wrong, Donna, is it, it activates with 91%, which you can get at um, uh, any kind of CVS or Walgreens, too. So you want to work in layers with that um, using the combination of the ProAir hy Pro hybrid paints, which are very opaque, um, in combination with the alcohol-based paints, creates a nice, even skin texture. So from where we started with that foam latex piece to right now is very, very nice. And you can actually see this same prosthetic on my Instagram at Tista underscore J. Um, you'll see the, what it looks like in character with an actual person in it. Um, and it's pretty cool. That was like one of the first, I want to say one of the first times I applied it, but that was closer to the end of the first time I applied that makeup for the length of the show. So I must put that guy into makeup. Um, at least, I think, 15 to 20 times before I took a picture of it and before it came out really good. Keep in mind, that was one of my first full face, this was one of my first full face prosthetics that I've ever done. So, um, here's a quick post of it so you can see all the fun details of it. So you want to get that as smooth as possible so it blends into the skin really nicely. just like that all right any other questions before we leave oh actually we gotta, we gotta take it off right yes all right so take it off all right so to take it off make sure you have a removal brush this removal brush will be only for removals you're not going to put paint in it you're not going to put anything else in it you're going to use it strictly for removal okay you're going to take your isopropyl mirror state if you are working on someone's skin Okay, do not put the isopropyl mirror state on the practice head because it will absorb and you won't be able to apply the prosthetic again. You want to use alcohol based remover such as isopropyl mirror state. I'm sorry, such as isopropyl alcohol. So use 99% isopropyl alcohol. Okay, so I'm going to fill that up with some alcohol. So when you're using it, when you're removing a prosthetic on a person. Any kind of solvent they get in their eyes is going to burn. You do not want to get it in their eyes. So you want to take some cotton um, pads, at least two. I like to take two cotton pads, put them in the eye, and then, therefore, it remains safe. Have them press their eyes, like this right here, with the cotton pads to prevent solvent getting in their eyes. Now, one of the places I like to get the solvent first is I like to take it and put it right underneath the eye. Make sure to not go in the eye, but make sure to put it underneath the eye. Uh, and the reason being is if you do that, as soon as that starts to seep down, it's going to lift a lot easier. Some of the places that the prosthetic likes to hold onto really tightly is right here. And I noticed like right over here, right above the eyebrow. So you wanna make sure you, um, you hit that area first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my solvent and just gently put it right over here. Okay. Then I like to take my brush and just kind of work the edge like this. Okay. As you can see, it started to remove the paint. Once I get to that layer in there, it's going to lift the prosthetic. All right, so you can see right here, it's starting to move the prosthetic, right? So once I get a hole in here, that's the point that I'm gonna start working the brush in and around. What you do not wanna do is you don't wanna force that brush in. Is it, is it a good angle right here? Can they it see? is. Okay. You don't want to force that brush like this. You don't want to start pushing it around because you have to remember this is a contact adhesive and it could be on there pretty good. You want to start just gently move the brush around, let the product do the work and then that's it. You're just guiding the brush. You're not pushing, you're not pushing against their skin, you're not pulling. You're gently moving the product around to where it can release. Okay. 
Melissa uh, Russ. Mm -hmm. Is that how I say her name? Russ? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay. Um, are all are oil based face paints a problem then for practice heads? Um, like what? Like, um, like, are you referring to like wolf effects or tag things of that nature? Melissa, are you forming? Are you um, speaking about like a beeswax based or a coconut oil based for face paint? Elaine is asking, how soft is the removal uh, bristles? Oh, it's it's very soft. It's very soft bristles. You want it to be as soft to the skin as possible. So, like, for instance, a chip brush here can be bought at Home Depot as a painter's brush, right? Mm -hmm. Which is very, very firm bristles, which you want to use for spatter. You cut that in half, which you get this length right here. When your removal brushes, when you're using your removal brush, you want to make sure you have it as silky smooth for the skin as possible. You want your removal process to be so relaxing and so non-abrasive that they can go, how was the whole process? Because they're, they're not going to remember being in the prosthetic as much as you getting them out of the prosthetic. Because that's going to be like the relief. Oh, they were so great in removing the prosthetic. It felt amazing. All right. Oh, it's Russo. Sorry, Russo. Melissa. Thank you. Um, we're doing great. She's asking about a beeswax base. Oh, beeswax base is uh, that's, it's totally fine. It's fantastic. Yeah. That's what yeah. that head practice head is over there. Yeah. yeah. So as you can see, comes right off, no problem. And that's that's prosy. If anybody's ever used prosy before, you know how strong that stuff is. It comes off really nicely. Can you get me that makeup wipe? Yeah. All right. So the Neutrogena makeup wipe works great for the practice head. So you want to make sure you use that. Um, when you use the Neutrogena Makeup Wipe, it will leave an oily residue onto the actual skin. You want to make sure you hit that with 99% alcohol. That will remove that and let it dry. Once that dries, you want to hit it with soap and water and it removes that rest of the residue. Can I start? Yes. So here we go. Taking the alcohol-based paint. Look at that. That's alcohol-based paint. Any of you that has ever worn a temporary tattoo, you know how long that stuff lasts. It comes right off and with minimal effort, just nice and easy. Just like that. When you're doing this on the face of somebody, your client, um, I recommend having makeup wipes. I recommend having the isopropyl mirror stay handy. And if you can, have some sort of uh, ability to get them a hot towel. Hot towel feels amazing on the skin after you've worn a prosthetic for a lengthy amount of time. If you don't have uh, access to a hot towel, um, don't worry about that. Uh, you just want to make sure that you remove any kind of residue on the skin. You want to make sure you, whatever you put somebody in, you take them out completely. So that way they can you know, hop in their car, go home, catch a plane if they have to. You don't want to leave somebody covered in makeup. You don't want to leave somebody in a prosthetic so they can go out, go out and party, have a good time, and then you not be there to remove it. That's not professional at all. Um, whenever you put somebody in, rule number one, as a makeup artist, you take them out. Jenny um, made a great comment. She always advises actors and models to look after their skin for the next few days if they have been wearing um, a lot of makeup or prosthetics. Would you like to add to that comment? What was the Read it one more time. Jenny, she always advises actors and models to look after their skin for the next few days if they've been wearing face paint, makeup, prosthetics. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's a great that's a great bit of advice. Uh, that way, you know, you don't want to like wear heavy makeup because this is considered a very heavy makeup. You don't want to wear a heavy makeup. And then immediately you start putting more makeup on that. So like a prosthetic, for instance, if you're like we did a show in Hong Kong where we had people in prosthetics for three, four days out of the week, you know, you want to make sure that they're taking care of their skin. You know, you want to make sure that they're not scrubbing and beating their face off. So that way um, they, they, they create these abrasions and these bruises, which look like a skin allergy because that could happen too. So, you know, you want to make sure that they, um, they take care of their skin. And what we mean by that is like, don't go get a chemical peel. You know, like, yeah, but, you know, just 
make sure that your face, like you, you're toning your skin and you're using a day and a night cream, um, a serum. So, you know, you're, you have sunblock. I know for a lot of those people, <laughs> it may not be like an everyday thing, but coming from a, a beauty industry person like myself, that's something that we practice daily. I mean, that's been on there for at least six months. And you can see how it just makeup wipe with not even alcohol on it just takes it right off. So, you know, you want to make sure you have the tools to, to do your practicing. Um, this is what we use. So it's very easy for us to do uh, makeup on something to have an idea and, and, and to try it out. Because, you know, if you have your kids, that's great. Eventually, we've all noticed that they're like, you know what? I don't want mom to paint me anymore. I don't want her to try this on me. My back is tired. I'm going to go play video games. I'm going to go watch TV. I'm going to go hang out with my friends. This allows you to keep on practicing and do it with, with without having to rely on somebody else. You know, you can get your, your idea. You have a great idea for a face paint, but you can't find a model. Guess what? You got this. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I'm Jay Bautista. Make sure to check out uh, Alex Hansen tomorrow at 1 p.m. Make sure to check out Dutch again on Saturday at 1 p.m. Remember, a special guest for our themed event on May the 4th. Be with you. As well as Cinco de Mayo, my birthday. Make sure to shout out. Check out my uh, Facebook page. Send me a happy birthday. Also, make sure to check out www.perfectpractice-tools.com to check out the heads. And uh, we hope to see you guys soon. Peace out and make sure to stay on this page right here because Donna will be going live in just a few moments to make some special announcements. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day.